Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over the Urban Decay and Prince collection. Not everything, cause I missed out. I wanted to get the vault, but it didn't happen. I did however get the two palettes and the luminizer and I'm doing three looks today. Three, <laughs> cause I really wanted to play with this gray that has this really beautiful sparkle in it. So yeah, I did three looks for you guys. Now when this was first kind of like sneak peeked, they talked about it, didn't show any pictures. I got really excited, but with a dose of uncertainty because it seems like brands have been collaborating with these icons like Mac and Aaliyah. <laughs> And uh, they haven't been going over very well. And then the pictures were released. And I know a lot of you guys, and myself included, were disappointed. And I wanted to see if you guys wanted to see it. And I also wanted to see if maybe it looked different in person. It kind of seemed like a 50-50 split on you guys. And then my curiosity took over. <laughs> so we will see if it looks better in person or not. Let me go ahead and just get into it. I'm going to show you guys the swatches, give you guys the information, show you the three different eye looks, and then I'll give you guys my thoughts. Both of the palettes are $55 and they are, of course, limited edition. The black one is called You Got the Look. <laughs> That'll get the song in my head in two seconds and I will, I will not stop. So this is the outside container. I will be keeping this just again for collector's purposes. You've got the beautiful symbol on the front and then all the names of the shadows on the back. But what's most important is what's on the inside. This is what the palette looks like. It's cardboard, it has a slight texture texture to it, UD prints, and then you open up, and this is what we've got on the inside. I'm not to blind you guys with the mirror. This eye look is on both of the palettes, but it kind of just opens up like a book, and then the mirror is in here. I like the aesthetic of it, but it is a little, like if you actually wanted to use this palette with the mirror, it just seems like it would be slightly difficult because of the way you're going to be holding it. So really it's just about aesthetics when it comes to how this palette was put together. There's different textures inside the palette, including mattes, a couple of those, some metallics, some metallic with glitter in them. We're, we're going to talk about those, but let me go ahead and show you the swatches. Sexy Dancer described as an ivory matte, crystal ball, ivory shimmer with gold and ivory micro pearl, endorphin machine, rich gold metallic, get off, Rich Bronze Orange Metallic, Love to the Nines, Warm Mocha Matte, Shockadelica, a Red Bronze Metallic, Groovy Potential, Deep Ultraviolet Matte with Gold Micro Pearl, The Artist, Purple Indigo Shimmer with Gold, Silver and Magenta Micro Pearl, Bold Generation, Black Matte with Silver Micro Pearl, and So Dark, Rich Black Metallic. We need to keep those shade descriptions in mind <laughs> when we get into the thought portion of this because it's just different than what I have seen from Urban Decay. Some good and some not so good. The purple one is the Let's Go Crazy palette. Again, you have that same eye look from Prince here. I, it's like it's staring just like through your soul. I love his eyes. And then these are the shades. And then of course you got the mirror on this side and it's magnetic. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. We have Alphabet Street Light Peach Matte. Get your groove on a lavender metallic with blue shift and micro pearl. Wind Doves Cry, White Shimmer with Violet Reflective Shift and Purple and Blue Micro Pearl. <laughs> Funk and Roll, Violet Satin with Micro Shimmer, Computer Blue, Baby Blue Matte, Raspberry Beret, a Rich Pink Metallic with Violet Micro Shimmer, DMSR, a Light Purple Shimmer with Light Blue Reflective Shift and Micro Shimmer, Baby I'm a Star, Purple Shimmer with Micro Color Micro Pearl. Delirious, a Purple Metallic with Pink Micro Shimmer. And then Indigo Nights, Baby Blue Metallic with Silver Micro Shimmer. And then we have the Luminizer, which you can use on your body or your face. This did not work out for me at all. It just pulled a very strange color, but I will show you guys a swatch nonetheless. All right, let's go ahead, get into the three different looks, and then I will give you guys my two cents. 
For the first look, I'm using the black palette. I'm going in with Love to the Nines on a Zoeva 227. Starting on the lower lid, on the outer corner, placing it there first, and then blending upward. This shade I did not have any trouble with. It blended nicely. I was able to build it up to the desired pigmentation. I mean, this is one dip, but I will go in once more and add right on the outer corner and still blending up a little bit more. So I was really happy with this shade. It seems to be a shade though that Urban Decay does quite a bit. I like that it's not too warm or too cool. It's like a nice neutral brown. I'm pushing this all in my crease and transition area. Same shade on a refer number three. Dragging this along the lower lash line. On a refer 28, I'm getting the shade Get Off. Applying this to the lid. I really liked this shade. This one is nicely pigmented. It's a smooth but intense metallic. And I'm using it dry. I really liked how this one applied. I'm bringing it upward into the crease a little bit. And I know that I'm going to have to touch it up after adding in some other shades, but just straight onto the lid, it looks really good. It's a nice gold. Next up, Shockadelica on an EO6 from Nakia Joy. Unfortunately, this shade is not my best friend. <laughs> um, I, I get fallout immediately with this shade. And the pigmentation is just not... Not what you would in anticipate it to be. If I was doing this look over and I wasn't just recreating the one that I already had, I would not use this. Basically just adding in some dimension. It's picked up a little bit more. I just, I don't know, there's something about it. It's kind of gritty and it doesn't, I don't know. Not my favorite. Going back in with the 227, no additional product, but I'm blending out the edge of that. I'm gonna touch up Get Off really quickly. On a Bristles Beauty EO3 DM, I'm going in with So Dark, and I am going to further add some depth with this. This black is nice. It's not something that's going to be too intense right off the bat. You can build it up. And I'm going to take it into the crease a little bit. This is essentially what I wanted the last shade to do and have that red undertone and just like be really pretty, but it just didn't work out for me. And then again, going in with the 227, no additional product, just blending. Flat Definer from Sonia G. I'm going in with Endorphin Machine. Again, I liked this gold as well. I'm using it dry. It's nice and pigmented. The golds are really pretty in this palette. On a new Refer 03, I'm going to go in with Bold Generation. I'm going to run this right along the lash line. as well as taking it on the lower lash line. I'm not going to be adding in the inner rim liner on this look, but this one I already have it. You can see it just like ties everything together, makes it look just like a little bit more smoky. Refer 3 going back in with the original shade, left to the nines, and I just want to go right underneath so that I get that kind of grungy look out of it. Wiping away any fallout. Refer 21, Sexy Dancer. I'm gonna use this to basically clean up and highlight. Now you could leave this as if you want to have just a matte highlight at the brow arch, but I'm gonna add a little bit of a shine. I'm going 
all around those shadows, helps to kind of blend the edges of them. And then I'm gonna take this same brush and I'm grabbing Crystal Ball. And I'm gonna place this right at the very brow arch, like right there, not dragging it out like I did the last shade. And then this is where I would add in inner rim liner and mascara. But instead, I'm gonna go wash this off and do another look. Moving on to the purple palette, I'm going in with Get Yell Groove On on the Zoeva 227. I'm going directly into the crease with this shade. Back and forth windshield wiper motions. And I will build it up slowly. I didn't have any issues out of this shade. There are some just weird textures in here, like kind of crumbly, not something I'm used to seeing from Urban Decay. Uh, sometimes it doesn't really matter, like on the lid. The shade that I'm going to use on the lid, it being applied to the lid does not matter, but kind of like that last look I did, that crumbly, dry texture, I'm not really a fan of it. Going back in and deepening up the shade just a little bit more, while also bringing it up a little further. I want this to be the peekaboo shade right around the edge. Funk and Roll on a Bristles Beauty EO2 RL. Going back into the crease with this shade. Slowly going to add to it. Slowly bringing this upward, adding some depth to the crease before I go in with the darkest purple. Delirious on a refer number two. I'm popping this on the lid. I'm using it dry. This is one of those shades that is like just like a little crumbly, but being packed on the lid, it works out well. It doesn't really have that true metallic look though. Computer blue on a refer number three. Taking this right along the lower lash line. This is more of a true matte. I do have to build it up a little bit, but I'm gonna be putting a little sparkle on top of it, so I'm not really worried about it. Taking that same brush and in Indigo Nights using that wet, I'm going a little closer to the lash line. Still kind of covering up the majority of the lash shade but it served as a nice base to this color. Wipe away the little fallout. Refer 21 and Wind Doves Cry. I'm not gonna be able to get that song out of my head now. <laughs> I'm applying this to my brow arch. And then lastly for the inner corner, I'm going in with DMSR on a Bristles Beauty PO6 RF. And that will complete this look. You just add on a little bit of inner rim liner and mascara. Starting off in the purple palette, I'm using a Zoeva 227 with the shade Alphabet Street. Taking this shade directly into the crease. Back and forth, windshield wiper motions. Making sure to get all the inner corner and outer corner. And then I'm gonna start blending upward. Going in for a bit more product. This shade blends out and applies very easily. I'm taking that same shade on a refer number three. I'm going to smoke it along the lower lash line. Next up, Raspberry Beret on an EO6 Precision Blend from Nakia Joy. I'm going to add some depth with this shade. Again, inner to outer corner in the crease, back and forth. And then I'm going to start slowly blending upward. I usually take my smoky eyes a little higher than I did with this one. I wanted to keep this one just a little bit lower so it's not as dramatic. Like it's definitely a dramatic eye, but 
I don't want to bring it up as high as I usually do. And I'm not going to put the darkest shade on the lower lash line. I'm now using that shade Wet with a rougher number 3. The only reason why I'm using it wet on the lower lash line is because I feel like it helps to make it a little bit more precise and it helps with fallout. Moving over to the black palette, I'm going in with Bold Generation on a Refer 28. I am just going to start applying this directly to the lid. You'll notice this is dry. You see the difference of this eye applying it dry versus going in with it wet. This is wet over here. I wanted to do this look just because I saw this wet. I was playing with them and I was like, I have to use this shade. It's so pretty. But in order to get that color, you do need to go in with it dampened. But I want to have a base layer first and then just go in lightly so I don't get a crepey eyelid. Taking this all the way up to the crease. Same shade and a refer 14 going directly into the crease, back and forth. I wiped off my brush and now I'm lightly going to start blending right around the edges. Now I'm going to go in with that shade Wet on a Yano series number 10. It's the same exact shade, I'm just using it slightly dampened and this time it's bringing out that silvery sparkle. It's so pretty. Crystal Ball on a Refer 21, highlighting the brow arch. And I'm going to apply that same shade on my inner corner using a Bristles Beauty P06 RF. I finished off this look by first curling my lashes. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting to talk about this lash curler. So Refer, you guys know I use their brushes all the time. The way they go about making their products is getting feedback. And I got three curlers in the mail one day and they're like, okay, what do you like about each one? One I absolutely was not a fan of at all. <laughs> And not to mention these things actually scare me. So I was like doing investigations like all over the place. That's how I ended up trying out different lash curlers. And the one that took out a couple of my lashes the other week, yeah, that was not this one. I finally got this one uh, like three or four days ago. I've been waiting. So the one that I loved, I handed over to Kelsey to see how she felt about it. And again, we give feedback to Refer and they came up with this and I love this lash curler. I'm so excited that I finally have it. Look at it, it comes in this cute little bag. I'm not gonna go on and on and on about this. I did use this to curl my lashes today and then I just put on mascara, but this is available now along with some restock, so I will have that information in my description box. But I gotta tell you, if you like lash curlers, that one is thebomb.com. It's just like, it doesn't pinch my eyes, it goes just so perfectly right up against, oh, I just love, mm, okay. Anyway, getting into the palettes. So, um, I wouldn't recommend either of these palettes. I can't do that with them being $55. They, there's some like good and bad. Okay, so let me start off with the purple palette, which is actually the one that I prefer. Uh, I, I feel like they could have done so much better. Even with the packaging, I feel like for $55, this just, I like the component. I like how it opens up. I like the aesthetic of it, but the actual feel is kind of cheap. It doesn't feel like a $55 palette, if that makes any sense. The amount of purples in here, you didn't need all of these. You didn't need all of these, and they are not created equally, let me tell you. This computer, let me just put these back like this. This computer blue, it is okay in the crease. You will have to build it up and it can get a little bit patchy. And then the textures of these purples, the Baby I'm a Star, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. I mean, you could have totally taken that out. We didn't need it in the palette. The matte here, this one, Alphabet Street, it performed like 
a traditional Urban Decay shadow would. And then get your groove on. I liked it as well as When Doves Cry, but they're not anything special. They're kind of dry, but they do work well on an unset eye. I did not set my eyes for this look. I used my Mario palette and just, I only set right underneath my brow arch. Now, Funk and Roll, this, <laughs> it looks totally different on the eyes than what it does in the pan. That one performed pretty well. This one performed pretty well. I liked that one. And then this metallic right here, this is really pretty. It's a gorgeous shade. You can like do what I did today, put it in my crease, put it on my lower lash line. And then DMSR, if you work with this shade, it's pretty. If you have glitter glue, it's pretty. If you use it wet, but it lacks the intensity that I really feel like it needed. This palette, if I looked at this, I would just think it it doesn't scream prints to me at all. And the lack of purple rain, how do you miss that opportunity? I just, how? I don't get it. Um, Indigo Nights is pretty. You will get a little bit of fallout. With the look I did today, <laughs> I had to take off my entire face because the fallout, instead of it being able just to wipe away, I, no, mm -mm, it destroyed my under eyes. So I had to redo my makeup today. I feel like there's too many purples in this palette. I feel like the shades are just a little lackluster. This one to me is kind of terrible. The, the textures of the shimmer and metallic and glitter, my, it, it's, um, it's different. It, it's not my favorite. This packed on the lid, it's pretty, but am I going to like it blended into the crease? No. So I don't feel like these are going to be as versatile when you're using them together separately. Yes, you can get these to look really nice for the most part, but using them together and creating a look is harder to do because of the textures. And I really I don't like that dry, gritty texture. If you're a beginner or just a makeup enthusiast and you don't necessarily know how to use some textures, I think this is gonna be a, a challenging palette for people. So I like this one better mainly just because I like the purple and the blue, but this one I would say performed a little bit better. Uh, okay. Again, let me open this up. There's a few shades in here that are actually really nice. The golds, those metallics are so pretty. They are really good metallics. And then this shade right here, I think they called this a matte. Let me double check. Yes, it's described as a black matte with silver micro pearl. This though, in comparison to this one, which let me see the description for that one. Shockadelica. That is a red bronze metallic. <laughs> I would think that the metallic shade would blend easier and retain more of the shine than what this did. And this one, I used it dry, applied it to my lash line, and it was beautiful. You saw me stamp it on my lid. You didn't see any of the shimmer <laughs> until I used it wet. It, this shade to me is kind of special. If you use this wet, it is gorgeous. It is so sparkly, but like more micro and just, it's a dance of glitter that I really, really enjoy. This black being called a metallic, it, no, it's, it's not. It's a satin metallic maybe. It's like somewhere in between. It's a nice black because it doesn't add too much at one time and it's buildable. And it does have a nice texture to it, but the descriptions to me are very off. Groovy potential, this one, I don't like it. I don't like it. And you probably see that in the swatch. When I swatch it on my finger, I'm like, oh, it's pretty. You know, it's one of those mattes with the sparkle in it, but it doesn't react the same way that this gray does. This gray or black <laughs> with the gray sparkle, it doesn't react the same. So good matte, two really nice metallics, 
average nice white shimmery shade and then you have a good bone color shade i don't think that you needed both of these in this palette and then i don't think that you needed both of these purples either this one i don't like the texture of it's like this whole bottom row was like mediocre the black is okay this is beautiful so for me quality wise i would have to say that this is the better palette it's almost obvious because Purples are hard to make. I can get good looks with both of the palettes, but am I inspired? No. Do they scream prints? No. Can I get all of these shades that I like in these palettes and other Urban Decay palettes? Yes, yes I can. I just, I think for the price point and it being prints, it just, they missed the mark. I do think it looks prettier in person than it does online, but it's still, I feel like a missed opportunity. And as far as this goes, this, it's just, I tried to use it underneath my foundation and it just went patchy on my skin. I think you might be able to see that on my daughter's arm. I was trying to even it out. It's a strange color for me. It just, turned weird whenever I tried to use it as just like a base it didn't have enough radiance to where it showed through the foundation and when I try to use it as a highlight it's a weird color it doesn't again it doesn't really have much other than just like that wet look and it didn't look right on my skin tone so for me this is just something that if you have the perfect medium tan skin you could wear it to have a little bit of luminosity to your skin and call it a day. But other than that, I don't think it is as it's described, which let me look that up. First off, it's called the liquid highlighter. So <laughs> ah, I don't like that. Um, it to me is not a liquid highlighter. It says shake to activate the liquid, which I did, and then apply directly or use the brush where under or over makeup for hydrated luminous glow. Mix into your favorite foundation or tint to moisturizer, yada yada. I think there are definitely better products out there, but if you are somebody who has medium, medium tan, tan skin, I do think that this would work for you. But I think that they marketed this as for all skin tones. Yes, it does. It says benefits, a shimmery liquid highlighter. It's not shimmery <laughs> and I wouldn't call it a highlighter. It captures Prince's star power. It's a universal shade that creates a dewy glow that illuminates the face and body and looks good on every skin tone. So I don't, I, I just don't agree with that. Anywho, I am disappointed, but I'm not too disappointed because really I was going into this with not high hopes. I do think I was able to achieve nice looks, but I don't think that it's worth the price tag. I just don't. And I know that I have comparable and better shades in my collection and just Prince, it could have been done so much better. Ah, okay. Anywho, that's my review. It's okay. Not terrible, not great, not something I'm probably ever going to pick up again. I'm going to put them in their boxes and put them in my collectors and uh, call it a day. <laughs> but I hope that I at least helped you guys make a decision if you were kind of wondering whether or not you should pick it up. I love you all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.